My brother Larry had written from Los Angeles, which was a small, dusty Pueblo in those days. He said California was a land of vivid contrasts, of great snow-capped mountains and broad, fertile valleys, where Mexican and newly arrived American settlers lived in peace and friendship. It listened mighty good to me. I wanted to see it all, from those mountains clear down to the broad blue waters of the Pacific. Then Larry's next letter arrived. It wasn't a very pleasant letter. It told of outlaws who were sweeping Southern California, burning, looting, murdering, without rhyme or reason. A holocaust created by some madman bent on obliterating that paradise. Gold was discovered. Men sought it and sweated and toiled for long weeks and months, only to have their ore trains ambushed and ruthlessly attacked. A towering cliff at Tahunga was blasted, engulfing the smelter below with a tragic loss of life. The dam that supplied the water for the placer mines in Las Flores Canyon was blown up, diverting the waters into Soledad Canyon, rendering the sluice boxes useless. At first, I thought that maybe Larry had exaggerated things might, but I learned different later when I discovered something I hadn't figured on, something that stabbed deep inside like the thrust of a Navajo lance. No sign of any of those renegades yet. Maybe we'll be lucky. For the Oz, I hope you are right, Larry. But I should not feel easy until we reach the Del Rey. How much do you think this ought, ought to run? Oh, four or $500 the ton, maybe. Hold it, Miguel. Come on out, or we'll blast you out of your saddle. Is that how you greet your friends, Larry? Oh, hi there, Johnny. Hi. What brings you out so late? I'll give you three guesses. Just the leader? Yeah, but uh, keep your trap shut around Rancho del Rey, will you? The senora doesn't think too much of me as a caballero. But then again, she doesn't know me very well yet. What you told me? We found some likely looking ore, eh, hey, Miguel? See, si, Larry. We're taking it to Los Angeles for the assayer to look over. Great. You mind if I ride along with you? Three guns are better than two. Sure. Glad to have you. Keep a sharp lookout, man. Clyburn, come with me. What's up, boss? There'll be a slight change in my plan. You mean you're calling it off? Oh, don't be a fool, Lachner. It's merely that the Sea Queen has sprung a leak and it'll take several weeks to repair her. So they don't get Shanghai to China? Prisoners sometimes escape, Lachner. I don't believe in taking unnecessary chances. Young Stockton and that man Miguel must be killed. You're making it easy for me. What about Johnny? He's with young Stockton. He's mighty useful. Yes. Also ambitious and dangerous. Watch him closely. If he ever shows signs that he doesn't believe you're the real leader, he must be killed immediately. Don't worry, boss. I'll watch him like a hawk. Right. Get back to your men. <laughs> Be along any minute now. Remember your orders. Get ready. Never mind those masks. And so I pushed the whole thing to number 20 and won $300. How come you picked on number 20? I had 20 beautiful reasons. That's the leader. Our 20th birthday is coming up in a few weeks. Drop those rifles. You're surrounded. Come ahead. 
been a change in the plans. After he signs that deed, give him this. Well, Marshal Luckner. So you're the man behind all this. Shut up. Take him over the fire. No wonder the Mexicans are suspicious of us Americans, you double-crossing renegade. I didn't make any mistakes. You did. You know what this is, Larry? No. Deed to your claim. And you know something? You're gonna sign it. You're crazy. You can make it mighty tough on yourself, Larry. Go ahead. See what it gets you. I think you mean that. I'd hate to brand a friend. I got a better idea. You think a lot of Miguel, don't you? Why not? He saved my life once. Well, here's your chance to save his. If you don't sign this thing, I'm gonna put a bullet right in his stomach. No! No, Larry! Don't sign anything! Okay, I'll sign. Let his hands go. Give him a pencil. I don't see any name it's made out to. Don't worry about it. Just sign it. There you are. When you get to the recording office, you'll find me there waiting. You won't be waiting for anybody, Larry. Neither will Miguel. I sure could fight. Dios de pétalos rojos, eres tan fina te de cantar nuestro romance de amor. Mi florecita fragante está, botoncillo de hermosura. Mi florecita muchacha bonita, escucha mi canto de amor. Eres tan fina, tan linda, eres tan hermosa, fragante de rosa. Tu boquita, tan bonita, te sonríe y me habla de amor. Eres tan fina, divina flor, es tu perfume sagrado. Dulce fragancia como de flor, lo que bendice este amor. Mi florecita fragante está, botoncillo de hermosura. Mi florecita muchacha bonita, escucha mi canto de amor. Estelita. Uh, sí, madre. All right, huh? Yeah. 
Ah, how do you do, gentlemen? I take it that you are strangers here. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, then, welcome to California, the land of the free. Huh. The Astro House, your hotel room's free, too. <laughs> no, hardly, sir. Hardly. But I have the cleanest rooms west of Denver, and very reasonable. Well, my friend has a date with a barrel. We'll see you later, mister. Uh, Gassaway is the name, gentlemen. Horatius P. Gassaway, formerly of London, England, but now a full-fledged native son. <laughs> Barrel of whiskey, and I don't mean moonshine. Barrel of red, either. Suit you? Do for a starter. Give it to him one glass at a time. One for you, too. No, thanks. I'll take a rain check. Customary to check your guns at the bar here, strangers. That's right. Yeah, that's a lot of food for all. Where can I find Mr. Severn? Over there. Thanks. Don't go away, Sam. <laughs> Don't worry. First drink I've had since that cactus juice Colonel Hoff gave me down at Fort Marcy. Uh, that Fort Marcy, New Mexico? Fort Marcy, New Mexico. Just come from there dry all the way. I beg your pardon, Mr. Stockton. I was preoccupied with Colonel Hoff's letter. Won't you have a cigar? No, no, thanks. I, I don't smoke anymore. I like things peaceful. Peaceful? Maybe I'm superstitious, Mr. Severn, but when I was marshaled back in Missouri, that is, before they were civilized, it seems every time I'd light up a good five-cent cigar, the shooting would start. <laughs> well, that isn't being superstitious, Mr. Stockton. That's being careful. That's a nice case you have. Are those Russian eagles on it? Yes, that's right. It was presented to me by the Grand Duke Alexis for services rendered. However, that belongs to the past. Colonel Huff's letter deals with the present. He writes me that I should try and persuade you to lend us a helping hand on the law enforcement here. No, I don't think so. But I did promise the Colonel I'd listen to what you had to say. He seemed to think the situation here was pretty bad. Pretty bad. I'm afraid it's much worse than that. As a matter of fact, if something isn't done soon, instead of California voting itself into the Union at the coming elections, there will be fighting between the native Californians and the Americanos. Things are at a stage right now where no man is sure to be safe. Well, that won't bother me any. I'll be out in the back country prospecting with my brother. Did you see your brother? Yeah. Larry Stockton. Maybe you know him. What about my brother? I hate to be the one to have to tell you, Mr. Stockton, but a few weeks ago, your brother Larry was waylaid by some of these outlaws and, well, was murdered. I'm sorry, Bill. What are we going to do about it? We'll do plenty, Sam, once we know where to start. In Jacari is the custom of Monsieur, you see, to walk arm in arm with a lady who has charmed him every night beneath the moon, so that all who see them spooning know her heart is his alone, and no one air can come between. Oh, I'm the boulevard. You see, the lovers are strolling. They're so sweet, but also sweet when strolling on the boulevard. They go promenading past you on the champs say You can hear each fellow gently saying, Oh, ma chérie, do you love me? Then you'll hear me read, oh, so daring, no comparing. Please take it from me. Oh, I'm the boulevard. You see that others are strolling. 
darling. They're so discreet, but also sweet. Mm. On the boulevard. Did you like my song? Uh-huh. Uh, that's his way of saying he's crazy about it. Uh, uh, won't you join us? My friend needs cheering up. Thank you. Well, tell me what's the matter. Well, we just had some pretty bad news, Miss... Three, uh, Marlo. Uh, Miss Marlo, this is uh, Bill Stockton. I'm Sam, Sam Boy. Bill just heard that his brother was killed. Oh, I'm so sorry. Perhaps you'd better be alone. No, oh, no, you can cheer up anybody. Even you? Maybe. Where are you from, Miss Marlowe? San Francisco. Uh, my friends call me Marie. All right, Marie. How long have you been here? Only a few months. My usual demitasse, Jose. Si, senor. Louis, that is Mr. Saverin, heard of me through a friend and brought me out here. Yes, I've met Mr. Saverin. And it struck me as though he'd be kind of nice to work for. <laughs> kind of nice. Kind of lucky, too. That was very nice. Well, now that you know all about me, what about you? Why shouldn't I ask you what brought you out here? Well, I came out here to prospect for gold. But now I'm going to prospect for something else. Those outlaws? You know anything that might help? Only what I hear, that they ride mostly at night, and it's not safe to travel unless in large groups and well-armed. Uh, Bill, Bill and me have always been able to take pretty good care of ourselves. I hope you continue to do so. Well, I see you've already met. Yes. Sometimes I get lucky. <laughs> oh, Mr. Saverin, this is my partner, Sam Boy. How are you? How do you do, Mr. Boy? Luck is a very elusive commodity, Mr. Stockton. I prefer to think myself most fortunate. You know, there's really no one quite like Marie. Ah, you're very gallant this evening, Louis. Well, good night, Bill. Shall we see you here often? Good night. As we say in Missouri, I'll be seeing you. Oh, why don't you stop that? Get out of here. <laughs> I feel so sorry for him, losing his brother. Yes. Yes, it's very sad. for new business around here. I got a notion to take our trade. Let's get unsaddled. You got to work some of that fat off of you, Slim. Oh, now, Bill, don't call me that. I ain't exactly fat, just kind of, sort of comfortable-like. <laughs> What is this? Uh, there's some sort of a greeting committee, I guess. That's how it looks to me, Marshal. I've never seen him before. Anybody know who he is? What have you got to say for yourself? Well, my partner and I had been over to the Silver Matador, and we brought our horses in here to bed them down for the night. Somebody started to shoot, and we shot back. <laughs> kind of friendly-like. <laughs> All right, what about the missing pieces? Well, that's how it happened, Marshal. I never saw this man before. Judging from the flashes of their guns, there must have been about four of them shooting. There's still some pieces missing, and I've got a calaboose that'll jar your memories. You've got no grounds to arrest us. What happened, Marshal? They told me somebody was shot. That's right, Mr. Saverin, and I'm gonna jail these two hombres till they find their tongues. But, Marshal, these gentlemen are personal friends of mine. They only arrived in town this morning. My apologies, gentlemen. Anybody that Mr. Saverin vouches for is all right with me. Clyburn, see if you can find out who that is. I'll be at the office. 
Careful you don't trip on them missing pieces, Marshal. <laughs> I must apologize, gentlemen, for such a reception through Los Angeles, and I must again warn you to be careful. I'd give a lot to learn who's behind all of this. Well, Mr. Stockton, I and many of my friends would give a great deal also to find out the answer to that question. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Good night. Either they don't want any strange Americans around, or they found out I'm Larry's brother. I'll bet you that's just about it. And the sooner they start things again, the better. Only the next time, I'll get one of them alive. I'll make him talk. Well, hello, boys. Hello, Marshal. Hadn't seen you around for a while. Thought maybe you'd gone up north. No, we haven't been away. Been just kind of moseying around. Find any of them missing pieces, Marshal? Haven't found a thing. Can't even identify the body. Say, by the way, Severin tells me you cut quite a figure as a marshal back in Missouri. You know, I can use a good man here. They're running me ragged. I've got a job, Marshal. Your brother? Well, good luck. If you need me, look me up. Be right back, Sam. Well, you haven't been around lately. Well, Sam and I took a posse out around the hill. Estelita, this is Bill Stockton, who's Estelita's 20th birthday day. Well, many happy returns. Can I ask you? And Johnny Morrell, Bill Stockton. Hello, Johnny. Stockton? Yes. Uh, maybe you knew my brother, Larry. Yeah, he was a friend of mine. The kind of a friend you can't forget very easy. You got any ideas? I went over the place where it happened. Signs of... Six or seven men in the ambush. That's about all. But I haven't stopped looking. Thanks, Johnny. Well, I guess maybe I forgot the house rules. I should have checked my guns. A lot of notches on that gun, Mr. Stockton. Yeah. See, I was marshal in a few hot spots back in Missouri. Very successful, too. I'm still alive. A waiter. Ah, uh, si, senor. Put these on the bar for me. Oh, si, senor. Oh, uh, there's a fat man over there at that table. Take his gun, too. Oh, si, senor. And by the way, his name is Slim. Well, I guess I'm now dressed for polite society. My Johnny has killed many men, too. Uh, only a few bandits, you know, here and there. Wait a minute, what's going on here? That's the rules of the house. That fella that called you Slim told me to take your gun. Called me what? The Slim, I think. Slim. I ordered this special for you, baby. Oh, Johnny, but suppose me mother should hear of it. Oh, forget about it. Come on, let's have some fun. Alma alegre, vamos a bailar. Sin amorío, vamos a gozar. A solas no he de sufrir, con ciencia no he de sentir. Tus besos no he de soñar, con alma alegre vamos a bailar. My heart is light and free, my spirit for each time love appears, I dance away. No bitter memories to keep, no lonely hours to weep. A happy life, what I seek, and so if love may come, I'll dance away. <laughs> Bien pudieron abrazar, también tus labios pudiera besar, pero 
pero para no sufrir, mejor a solas vivir. Tus besos no he de soñar, con alma alegre vamos a bailar. My arms are warm and eager to My lips are soft and filled with tenderness And yet alone I shall stay Little there's two as they may I live for each bright new day And so if love may come I'll dance away of her. Come on, Estelita. Let me go, Tonio. Nuestra madre should hear of this. You say one little word, Tonio, and I tell nuestra madre about the señorita in San Pedro. Oh, come on, Estelita. Get let's get up. I'll kill you. No, no, Tonio. He was all set to shoot. I didn't have time to argue with him. I'm very grateful to you, Mr. Stockton. Why, if it hadn't been for you, a tragedy might have occurred. You can't blame the kid. He had plenty of provocation. I'm sure he did. No, I believe he must have hit his head on the edge of that platform. I don't like trouble in the silver matter, door, Johnny. It was all Tonya's fault. All I did was... Yes, I know what you did. I saw it. Oh, now, take it easy, kid. Tonio, Tonio, you owe this man an apology. That's right, Tonio. If this gentleman hadn't hit you, you would have shot an unarmed man, and you know that's a hanging offense, my boy. A thousand pardons, amigo. That's all right. Muchas gracias, Marie. Easy does it, Tonio. Estelita, you're leaving with me at once. I will not. Better let her go, Johnny. Just because I was your brother's friend doesn't give you any right to horn in, Bill. Maybe I'm trying to help you. Yeah. Go on home, honey. Tonio! Tonio! Amigo, please say nothing about the cause of the quarrel. Tonio, come here. Are you hurt? It is nothing, Madre, nothing. But tell me what happened. Well, uh, that is... Well, I'm afraid it's all my fault, ma'am. You see, someone pulled a gun in there, and I had to knock your son out of the way of the bullet. I didn't mean to hit him quite so hard. Bullet? Oh, Madre, allow me to present Senor Stockton, my mother. How do you do? You must be the Bill Stockton Larry spoke so much about. Yes, ma'am. Uh, oh, Larry was a very good friend of ours. He gave his life for what we Californians hold so dearly. Thank you. Estelita, where have you been? It got too hot waiting for you in the carriage, Madre, so I walked around and looked in the shops. Senor Stockton, may I present my daughter, Estelita? Senorita? Senor Stockton is Larry's brother. He has just saved Tonio's life. Now, I'm Sam Boy. Pleased to meet you all. We'd be honored if you would make our home your headquarters. That's very nice of you, but... Oh, I... yes, Senor Stockton, do. Your brother spent a great deal of time there. It is a lovely old spot amid a great vineyard. Do you make wine there? Well, the Delray wine is famous throughout Southern California. Now, we'll accept what we bill. All right. So the attack scared him off, hmm? And they left the country. They didn't stay at the hotel that night. My men couldn't find Hyde nor Hero. And now they joined forces with the Senora del Rey. Well, let them. We've driven off their cattle and blown up the Lost Flores Dam so they can't mine their gold. 
They won't be able to buy any more cattle, and you'll have them right where you want them. Yeah. Tell Johnny to keep away from Estelita. I don't trust him. If he marries her, he'll attain an importance that will not fit into my plan. I'd have taken care of them that night in the livery stable if you hadn't interfered. But they were sent to me by the United States Army. It might be very unfortunate for you, Marshal, and for me, if something should happen to them while in your custody. Understand? You forget about him. But I want him at the rancho. Know why? Yeah, you're a smart little devil, aren't you? Talk about the devil. They would have to come along. so little of him at the rancho. You're going to have to grow up. And why must I grow up? Because when you get to be a big girl, I'm going to take you to New Orleans. Oh, we will be married, Johnny. Sure. And I'm going to buy you a lot of beautiful clothes. And little red shoes with high heels? Little red what? Shoes. Oh, shoes, yes. I'm going to buy you bangles and bracelets and all kinds of beautiful things. And then one day I'm going to take you to Mardi Gras. Oh, how soon? When do we go, Johnny? Can't be soon enough for me. You happy? Oh, yes. Any idea where we are, Bill? Looks like the entrance to Los Flores Canyon. It's kind of a pretty spot, isn't it? Los Flores Canyon? Didn't the outlaws blow up a dam here or something? That's right. My brother mentioned it in one of his letters. Enjoying yourself at Del Rey Rancho? Oh, sure. The senora treats us fine. <laughs> and Estelita? She's kind of a cute little package, but she's all tied up and addressed to... To Johnny. <laughs> you sorry? Maybe. For us to lead up. Louie wouldn't like this. Louie isn't here. Why answer your key? Why answer your key? Que paso, amigo? Why answer your key? Pronto. I guess we better get out of here. I wonder why he stopped us. Maybe he didn't like our looks. Perhaps he was one of those outlaws. No, if he was, we wouldn't be riding here. We'd be lying back there on the ground, staring up at the sun and not seeing it. My guess is somebody's repairing the dam. And they don't want any strangers around, is that it? I think it'd be a good idea to forget everything we've seen. might be looking. Louie doesn't like to ride, but he knows I adore it, and he told me I could go with you. He doesn't know how lucky he is to get you back. Well, wish I had time to go riding with a young lady. I just go find some of those missing pieces, Marshal, and you'll have all the time in the world. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe you've seen something around that'd help. No, not a thing. Oh, but we did, Bill. 
We went riding through Las Flores Canyon, and a man with a gun stopped us and made us go back. He looked like an outlaw to me. I'm sure he couldn't have been an outlaw, Marshal, or he would have shot us from ambush. Thanks. I'll have Clyburn look into it. You know, sometimes little girls talk too much. Oh, I'm sorry, but I, I thought it was something he should know. After all, he is Marshal. Sure he is, but let's not tell anyone else about it. When am I going to see you again, Bill? Well, I don't know, Marie. If I knew the Senora Del Rey, perhaps I could visit you sometime. Oh, well, that part's all right, because she's asked me to bring my friends over any time. When would you like to go? This afternoon would be nice. Fine. We'll invite Saverin to go along, too, if you'd like. Let's go after her. Where have you been? Out. Louis. Bill's just invited us to go to the Delray Ranch show this afternoon. Really? Well, that's fine. Would you like that, darling? I think it'd be kind of nice. Well, of course, then we'll go. of you, Mr. Stockton, to have taken Marie out riding. I'm sure she enjoyed it. We both did. You're not afraid I might move in on you, are you, Mr. Severin? <laughs> Wouldn't blame you for trying, if you would care to attempt the impossible. Maybe you're right. <laughs> Love is meant to give, not borrow. Ever faithful, it must be. I know you're a, a nice girl. But I got to look out after her, Bill, and, well, a woman can cause a fella a heap of trouble. Don't worry, Sam. I'll take good care of him. Ever faithful I shall be. Miles today can fade tomorrow. Happy hearts can turn to sorrow. Love is meant to give, not borrow. Ever faithful it must be. So if he would be my true love, never seek he out a new love. For I love but only you, love. Ever faithful I shall be. That was one of our lovely old native songs. Perhaps you would like Estelita to sing it for you in Spanish? Oh, I'd love that, Senora. Estelita, you will sing that song in Spanish for our guests. Your handkerchief, Senora. Oh, gracias. Mano a mano dos amores, con amor y no rencores, porque amor no es prestado, si no es santificado, risas se esfuman mañana, alegría se vuelve en penas, como pasos en la arena, el amor se borrará. Amor, 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 no me dejes sufrir, por favor. Si algún día te enamoras, recuerda tú mis consejos, que el amor no es prestado, sino es santificado. Pido a Dios que nunca sufras la desdicha de un querer. Cuida bien tus sentimientos, así no sufres mujer. Lovely, Estelita. Está muy lindo. I must be careful or you'll be taking my place at the Silver Matador. Uh, I'm sorry, Senora. I should have only said that she was superb. Madre, something has happened. I see Don Alvarado and Senor Martin. Excuse me, please, a few minutes. 
Mr. Lisa, you remain with our guests. Tonio, come with me. Come in, senores. Senora, we must get all the vaqueros together and ride at once. Un momento, please. Tell me what has happened. It's the Miranda Rancho, ma'am. Their cattle have disappeared. It must be those outlaws again. Oh, no, no, I don't think so. They haven't done any daylight raiding so far. There's always a first time for everything. I guess you're right. You say one of your vaqueros saw the tracks leading into the Verdugo Hills? That's right, senor. I think perhaps they wanted you to see them. Por qué? They have reason to believe that they have learned of our secret repairing the Los Flores Dam. You mean they want to draw your men off so they can destroy it again? That is quite possible. I suggest that you gather your own men together and ride into the Verdugo Hills as you may be expected to do. Meantime, Tony will see that the guards at the dam are doubled. Muy bien, señor. I sure hope this won't be no wild goose chase you got us on. Maybe it will, but I'm not passing up any chances of getting my hands on those renegades. That's all right with me, but what about them solo trips of yours? I got my reasons. Mm -hmm. Black mane and blue eyes. Mr. Severn won't like it. You think they'll come tonight, don't you? Quien sabe. But if they do, they will find us ready. My man, Senor Estrada. Well, never mind that. Just don't go following those renegades, that's all. But why? We could have caught them. That country up ahead is made to order for an ambush. Ambush? Perhaps you are afraid, Senor Stockton. Look, kid, whenever there's shooting going on, I'm always afraid. How did you happen to be here? Oh, I just make it a habit of kind of being around when things are happening. And you know those outlaws could have a lookout on one of those hills yonder. Just to watch us and signal which way we go. You seem to know a great deal about their plans, Senor Stockton. Look, kid, this isn't the first fight of this kind I've been in. You know, if we'd kind of mosey around, we might be able to spot their lookout. Chasing butterflies, eh? Well, how did you guess? What's all the heavy artillery about? You were trying to dynamite our dam. Me? Well, I thought your dam was already dynamited. I was riding along the road when I heard somebody hightailing it, and I came here to hide till I passed by. Hide from who? 
I'd have been hanged with better stories than that. Well, go on and take me in if you want to. But the marshal can't hold me with the flimsy evidence that you've got. Now I'm beginning to understand why the outlaws haven't raided Los Angeles. So Luckner's a friend of yours, huh? No, Luckner's no friend of mine. He's not working with the outlaws, either. He's too stupid to be anything but honest. Maybe. You still haven't explained what you were doing on the Ray Land. I was waiting for someone. Ask the leader. Satisfied? You lying. Take it easy, Tonio. If you kill him, you'll have to tell the marshal why you did it. You always seem to have a reason why I shouldn't kill him. That's a pretty good reason, isn't it, amigo? Sorry, amigo. You may go. But if I ever find you here again, I promise you I'll... You're getting a little big for your britches, aren't you, son? Hasta la vista. But how did Senor stop them find out about it? We promised our neighbors to tell no one of our plans. But, Madre, I told him nothing. But he was right about the ambush. We would have been shot to pieces. And thank the saints, he was there. No matter how. But I think, my children, we had better all try to get a little sleep, huh? Buenas noches, madre. Buenas noches, querido. Un momento, Estelita. We caught your fine friend, Johnny. Johnny? What was he doing there? If you want my opinion, he was one of the outlaws. That's one big lie, Antonio. She said he was there to meet you. You just say those things because you don't like my Johnny. And just to show you how smart you are. He was there to meet me. So, you would disgrace the Del Rey family. If you see this impudent dog once more, I shall tell Nuestra Madre. Now you will be a sneak, beside a stupid pig. My Johnny, he's nice. He loves me very much. I do as I please. We'll see. Ran into trouble at the dam, boss. Somebody must have tipped them off. They were waiting for us. I got hit. Yes, go on. They picked up Johnny. What? He managed to talk himself out of it, but he tells me Stockton thinks I'm mixed up with the outlaws. Oh, you stupid fool. Now you got yourself a wound that'll be difficult to account for, and Stockton suspects you. You know something, Saverin? You're gonna help me. Because you're in this thing deeper than I am. Did you recognize any of them? It's difficult to see through masks. You heard bad? Did you ever hear of anybody being hurt good? Come on, let's take the marshal into my office. I've got bandages in there. Where's the fire? They just held up the joint. The marshal got shot. He's in Saverin's office now. You a one-man posse? Nah, them blasted renegades lit out of town five minutes ago. I'm just trying to keep out of Saverin's sight. He's madder than the devil. Hello, Stockton. The marshal tried to shoot it out with him. Any bone smash, marshal? No, they drilled me clean. I guess I'm lucky at that. I just saw Clyburn outside, and he seemed in an awful hurry. That stupid blockhead. Sounds like they took it for plenty, Mr. Saverin. They certainly did. They robbed me of over $5,000. Here. That's all they left me, from Ramon Perez, in payment for his losses at my table, the deed to 2,000 acres of worthless land. Well, I didn't know there was any worthless land in this part of the country. Well, uh, what good is this land, Mr. Stock? If I grow wheat, the outlaws burn it. If I stock it, they run off my cattle, I tell you. 
Soon, all the rancheros will be driven from this part of the country. Things sure seem black, the way you put it. Listen, I just heard. Are you all right? Yes, dear. All except my pocketbook. I came over to take Mary writing, but I guess now we'd better make it some other time. Oh, no, 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 no. Why postpone it, Mr. Stockton? There's nothing Marie can do for me right now except console me. And I assure you, I prefer such consolation by moonlight. It's lovely, isn't it? Uh-huh. You know, when things get settled around here, maybe... Maybe what, Bill? Maybe I can find time to tell you that I love you. That I want to marry you. I'm sorry you said that, Bill. What's wrong with wanting to marry you? Don't you love me? It, it isn't that, but there are things I want. Things that only a rich man can give me. Louis? Why not? I can't go on being an entertainer forever. Maybe I can make money. Maybe, Bill. But with Louis, I'd be sure. So you'd take a man you didn't love just because he has money. I don't get it. I guess I had a kind of a crazy idea that you loved me. Love should never interfere with common sense. I'm going to marry Louis. Had a row with that black-haired canary of Severns, didn't you? Man always gets in trouble when he starts fussing around with a woman. First thing you know, she's got your hog tied. Speaking of women, there goes Estelita moving kind of cautious like. I reckon she's got a mighty important date. She's toting a bundle with her. Oh, now you come back here, Bill. That ain't none of your business. Oh. Is I lovely bright eyes that so draw me to thee? La da la da dee. La da 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 la da. Is I lovely bright eyes? That so draw me to me. Ah, but give me. Johnny, Johnny! Oh, I was so afraid you would not come. Uh, you know better than that. Anyone see you leave? I was most careful, Johnny. Now we go get married? As soon as we get to Arizona. The first town we hit. Oh, I'm so happy. Doctor. What do you want? You're making a mighty big mistake, Estelita. You talk like an old duenya. Well, it's about time you mind your own business.
Doug. What did you bring this man here for, senorita? We lost our way, Diego. You lost your way. <laughs> That's about the size of it. You will have to explain all that to the senora. Oh, no, but you must not bother me, madre. I'm sorry, senorita, but I have my orders. You will please walk ahead of me, senor. Ande, vamos. I do not understand. What has happened? She brought this man to the place I was guarding, senora. So I brought them to you. These Yankees seem to have more ways of subduing a land than by armed force. Diego, you may go. Si, senora. We were simply taking a stroll, senora. With a young girl alone, unchaperoned? I beg your pardon, senora. I must have forgotten your California custom. You have abused my hospitality, senora. Even if senor Stockton forgot, you, Estelita, should have remembered. I did not go strolling with Senor Stockton, Madre Mia. I hate him. I was with Johnny. We would have been in our way to be married if he had not interfered. Johnny Morel? My child, what has come over you? I love my Johnny. This is beyond belief. I know your Johnny by reputation. I would never give my consent to such a marriage. But you do not understand my Johnny, Madre Mia. He's handsome, big, strong. He loves me. We're going to New Orleans. He promised to buy me beautiful dresses, bracelets, and little red shoes. Oh, you must be out of your mind. Juana. Si, sí, senora. Take Estelita to our room. Lock the door and remain with her. I shall talk to her later. But, madre mia. At once, Estelita. You don't need to say it, I understand. The main thing, Estelita, is here and safe. The least I can do is to prove that I trust you completely. Diego brought you in because... You don't need to explain. I want to. Diego was guarding our smelter. For months now, the rancheros have secretly been bringing in gold ore to be used to restock our farms once these outlaws have been driven off so we can live again in peace. I'm certainly glad to hear you have all of this gold because the way these outlaws have been operating lately, the ranchers have just about had everything taken away from them. There's so little we can do. If only we could find out who is back of all this. I believe I have an idea. Then you must tell me. Well, just like I said, I, I think I know who it is. And I think I know who's working with him. But before I name anyone publicly, I want to be sure first. And privately, senor? There could be one or three. Luckner, Saverin, or Marie. Marie Marlowe. Oh, surely you, you cannot be speaking seriously, senor. Why, I thought you were enamored of her. I wouldn't let my personal feelings stand in the way of avenging Larry. But, but Marie Marlowe. First, I thought it might have been Luckner. But he isn't smart enough. And this afternoon, he was wounded by the outlaws. The logical man is Louis Saverin. But two things don't add up. The outlaws raided his silver matador, and he was vouched for to me by Colonel Hoff. I hate to think of it as much as you do, but everything points to Marie. We took a ride the other morning. We went up Los Flores Canyon, and we were asked to leave by one of your men. I'm sure that Marie suspected they were repairing the dam. And as you know, that night the dam was attacked. But, senor, the day you brought senor Saverin and Marie, a curious thing happened. I found a note in my handkerchief warning me of the attack. Only one of three people could have put it there. Senor Saverin, Marie, or yourself. Well, I can assure you, Senor, I didn't do it. Then either Senor Saverin or Marie is a good friend. Mm -hmm. And one of them could be an enemy. You know, I have a plan, I think, that can prove to us for sure which one is the good friend. And, Senor, I'll need your help. All I have is at your disposal, Senor. Come in. Ah, still mad at me, Bill? How about you? You weren't very gallant. You said you loved me. 
But you love money and what it could buy more. How about having both of them? It would be very nice, but I don't understand. Gold is what I'm talking about. The Californians have been piling it up for months. And I know where it is. Gold? You've been drinking, Bill. Lots of gold. You know the trail that leads from the Rancho Del Rey house to Los Flores Canyon? Yes. Well, just before you get to the canyon, there's a path that leads off to the left. You follow that for about 100 yards, and there you'll find the smelter. The gold is hidden under a sandstone shelf just beyond it. Poor Bill. You'd never make a renegade. You shouldn't have taken me seriously. I was only teasing you. This is the only kind of gold that I want. My very good friend, Mr. Stockton. Well, I reckon I was just saying goodbye. Unless you want to do something about it. Goodbye, Mr. Stockton. That gold. Quien sabe. How much you want to bet? All right. All right. Come on. Help it. All right, get it in, get it. She won't budge. What's that thing weigh? 1,500 pounds and seven ounces, senor. How do you like that? All the gold in the world, we can't get it out. Yes, we can. Watch him. I'm going for a wagon. Kind of tough getting yourself out of this one, Johnny. Don't go getting trigger happy, Tonio. I want Johnny alive or a witness. A witness, huh? I don't think I could remember a thing. You will when there's a noose around your neck, amigo. <laughs> Men on here, Tony, on change guard every four hours. We in? Well, can we get some sleep now? Sure, until daylight, then we're going into town. Well, now what's happened? Everything. We stuck up the smelter and found the gold all right, but we couldn't get it out. What do you mean you couldn't get it out? Well, it was too much of it. They had it all melted down in one big chunk, over 1,500 pounds. The four of us couldn't begin to lift it. There was more than four of you there. Why didn't you get a wagon? Well, Johnny started to do that, and right away they jumped us, and the shooting began. Killed Harris and grabbed Johnny. We didn't figure they'd have it in one big hunk like that. Looks like nobody does any figuring around here but me. You've bungled this thing right from the start. Looks like some of that Stockton's work, if you ask me. Wouldn't have happened if Johnny had done a job on him the first night he was in town. Now we got to grab Johnny to keep him from talking. Johnny will be a hard man to make do that. Anybody can be made to talk. Well, what do we do? Raid the place and get him out? That would be kind of silly this early in the game, wouldn't it? 
So we'll do it nice and legal-like. We'll have to take a chance and play it according to the brakes. Let me do the talking. Probably holding them there. Bill Stockton around? He and Sam Boy left for Los Angeles early this morning. Oh, I'm sorry I missed him. Perhaps you can tell me what I'd like to know. I understand there was a raid here last night. One of the renegades were killed, and you're holding Johnny Morrell. Is that right? That's right. When Bill gets back from town, we're going to make him talk. He'll talk when I get him in the calaboose. But we are holding him here, Marshal. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm responsible for the custody of all prisoners. I'll have to take him in. You and your son will have a chance to appear against him at the proper time. We are holding him here. Mind if I see him for a minute? Sorry to have to do it this way, young fellow, but it's my duty. Johnny, don't try anything. You're my prisoner. Get on that horse, quick. Clyburn, see that I get a 15-minute head start. Well, Mr. Stockton, I thought we'd said goodbye. That was yesterday. Last night, there was a raid, and we captured Johnny Morrell. Splendid. Well, then you finally have the mysterious leader of those outlaws. Johnny isn't the leader of the outlaws, Mr. Saverin. Oh? Well, well then who is? Marie Marlowe. Oh. Uh, uh, <clears throat> that's an infamous lie, Mr. Stockton. First, I thought it might have been Luffner. But he was wounded by the outlaws. Let him out. Well, what, what, what's Marie got to do with all this? Plenty. Yesterday, before you walked in on us, I purposely had told her where the gold the rancheros had been gathering was hidden. And it's no coincidence that they attacked last night. I will not listen to any more of these lies, Mr. Stockton. I'm going to see Marie at once, and I expect an apology from you. We'll both see Marie, and I'll do the talking. I'm afraid you're wrong, Bill. I was waiting outside like you told me to, and the stage for Sacramento went by, and she was on it. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. I guess I know what she looks like, don't I? There's your answer. It's incredible. You must bring her back here at once. You're in love with her. And if I bring her back and she's proven guilty, you know what'll happen to her. If she's guilty, she has to be punished. Smart trick you played, Ed. I thought so. Too smart for you to think of, Ed. Meaning? Meaning, uh, I've been wondering. Who's giving you your orders, Ed? The only orders I take come from me. You know, Johnny, every once in a while, I can be real smart. <laughs> All right, boss, what do I do next? You're in a jam. Everybody knows you're one of the renegades. You've got to hightail it out of this country. How do we fix it to get you in the clear? Won't take any fixing. You make a run for it. I'll fire a couple of shots in the air. We better do it now so they'll hear the shots down at the ranch. All right. You think of everything, don't you, boss? Well, uh, say, let me have one of your cigars, will you? Haven't had a smoke since last night. Sure. Hold this. You didn't think I'd go for that Malachi, did you, Ed? Where I ride away and you shoot me in the back to keep my mouth shut? <laughs> it's a good idea. You mind if I borrow it for a minute? Sometimes I'm very smart.
Luckner, huh? Johnny Morrell killed him. Luckner came to the ranch with Clyburn and took Johnny from us at gunpoint. He left Clyburn to hold us back while he started for Los Angeles with Johnny. A few minutes later, we heard shots. Clyburn left immediately, and we followed as soon as we could saddle up. We found Luckner's body lying beside the trail. What happened to Clyburn? He had disappeared. So Luckner must have been in with them all of the time. That wound he received at your place must have been an accident. And you think the attack was merely to throw suspicion away from him? That's about the size of it. Tonio, you and Sam better get back to the Rancho Del Rey and keep a sharp lookout. Now that Johnny's on the loose, he might try and pick up the outlaws and return for the gold. What happened, Johnny? Where's Luckner? Tough thing about Luckner. He fell and broke his leg. I had to shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. It's better than that. He's dead. You mean it? If you don't believe me, take a look at this. I was just telling the boys Luckner's dead. Luckner's dead, all right. Why did you kill him, Johnny? You know why I killed him. So help me, I don't. No? Luckner wanted to kill me. He wanted me to make a run for it. I didn't like the idea. So now he's dead, and I'm taking over. I suppose you're going to take his place. Mr. Severin, you know too much. No more than I've always known, Johnny. Luckner took his orders from me. Luckner? That's right. I intended to stay in the background, but Luckner's death forced me to the open. Now that you're going to take his place, I want you to know my plans. I'm not interested in gold or cattle. I'm interested in land. Your profit comes from all the golden cattle you take. Mine will be all the land between the border of Mexico and the Tehachapi. Now, here are my orders. Marie Marlowe's escaped on the northbound stage. She knows too much. Stockton's gone after her. Find him. Bring Marie back here. Stockton's dangerous. He's the one man who could organize the rancheros against us. Kill him. That's all. Mr. Severn. Yes? Something you didn't understand, perhaps? I don't take orders. I give them. Hold up for a minute. I want to talk to Miss Marlowe. Well, hurry it up. I'm late now. I want to talk to you privately. Of course. You've got a lot of fancy explaining to do, young lady. What are you trying to say, Bill? You tipped off Luckner that the Las Flores Canyon Dam was being repaired. It was attacked. And when I came to your dressing room last I night... I was wondering about that, too. You weren't very convincing when you said you proposed to turn out law. Were you pretending when we went riding together, too? Should have been. Well, I was. You. And I was only pretending when I turned on you the instant Louie walked into my dressing room. Just because you're a woman won't help you one tiny bit. I've got a mighty important question to ask you, and I want a straight answer. I told you where the rancheros had hidden their gold in order to test you. Did you tell Louis Saverin? Yes, Bill, I told him. 
Uh-huh. So he's the leader of the outlaws after all. Why did you tell him? I needed more proof. Proof? Proof for what? Perhaps this will explain it. You're glad to know this. How did you catch on to Severn? At first, I wasn't suspicious of him, but later, when I discovered he was acquiring vast amounts of land, I checked at the registry office. He had the deeds in his safe, but he'd never registered an acre of it. Now I have the proof on Louis that I need, and I'm on my way north to report to General Fremont. Yes, but Johnny's killed Luckner. He'll take over the outlaws and pillage the entire countryside and be gone before we can have any help from General Fremont. Johnny Morell and his outlaws just held up the store. They took block and tackle and some blasting powder and lit out of town. You wait here. I'm going to Rancho Del Rey. gone to the corral with the few vaqueros we have left. They're going to raise the rancheros and try to recover the gold. So they got the gold. I reckon this is some of Johnny Morrell's work. Ah, that devil. The gold can be replaced, but not the lives of my poor people. Now we'll take care of Johnny Morrell. And if we're lucky, this will be the last raid for those renegades. You missed the fireworks, Bill, but there'll be plenty of more if we ever catch those murdering sidewinders. They're heading up the big Tahunga. I saw them coming in. There must be a hideout somewhere up there. I'm going to use this to buy several hundred fighting men. Then we're going to take Southern California, annex to no country. How does that sound to you? I'm for dividing up the gold now, Johnny, and scattering. Things are going to get awful hot around here pretty soon. Clyborne, you'll keep your mouth shut. I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'll take my share now. I'm going to give you your share, Clyborne. Right in your stomach. Those were gunshots, all right. There is an old miner's shack on Burro Flats. That is it. I think they came from that direction. You lead the way, Diego. Si, senor. Yeah, that looks like somebody's already taken care of you, Severin. The place is surrounded, Bill. Start the attack. All right, Severin. Let's have it. Who killed my brother? Who killed him? Johnny Morris.
Johnny Morrell. I shoot at him in the dark, but, but he got away. Oh, so he got away. Well, we can't follow him tonight, but we'll be after him when daylight comes. Tonio, I'll leave you here in charge. You bury the dead and bring the rest into town. Sam and I are going ahead. I want to look in Savern safe. Come on, Sam. Very good, amigo. Uh, it's a saffron's dead, and we rounded up the outlaws. Johnny's loose in the hills, and we're going after him at daylight. just rode into town. He's out in the plaza now. Did you take me with you when you took the gold? I was very busy, baby. But, Johnny... I've got one more little thing I've got to do. Then I'll meet you right here. Oh, Johnny, you mustn't, please. Go inside and wait for me. Right here. Johnny! You must feel, Bill. No one will ever know how I feel about a thing like this. Poor Estelita. But now there'll be no more fighting. Maybe peace has come to California. <laughs> 